Welcome to the Peoria Art Guild and our newest exhibit. It's Hattie Lee, Bound Together Cultural Patterns. And um, if some of you remember our last exhibit with um, Kaneo Konami, um, Mason had a collaborative piece in it and it was with Hattie Lee and him. And he, they did a collaboration at Bradley. And from that, we kind of curated a show based on Hattie's work. And tell us a little bit about your background and why we call it cultural patterns. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of what I'm doing comes out of researching my family history. Um, I'm a member of the Cherokee Nation in Oklahoma, which is coming from my great grandma on my mom's side. And so at Bradley, I've been doing a lot of research of Cherokee tribal patterns and um, basketry and like moccasin beadwork and that kind of thing. But also I lived overseas in Asia and was involved with different tribal groups there. So I'm influenced by a lot of indigenous people groups and their art, art forms and crafts. And so that goes into a lot of my um, abstracted patterns that I'm making. Well, when we started out the exhibit here with some of your fiber work, um, they're actually two large quilts and then these pieces. And right next to it, we did the Moccasin Spirit, which is a, a gouache, um, I guess it's just a little painting. Is it a sketch? Because um, if you look at the, the painting, you notice that it's very similar to all the different patterns that you created with the fabric pieces. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I like to do the patterns that I'm creating from this background in the different mediums because I am very multi-media um, based. <laughs> so I like seeing how the same form works with felt and working with color and then how it goes into gouache and working with color. And they have a different, I mean, it's the same forms, but they have a different feel to them still, even just with the different mediums yeah. that I mean. Well, and I do think color seems to be the main um, vocabulary that yeah. you use, that you use it. And, and it is a very, from the very earthy tones to the very bright and, and colorful ones. We're gonna come down and um, see most of the work that we included in your exhibit um, our gouache paintings, the watercolor. Mm -hmm. We have some printmaking also, as well as the fiber pieces. And these two large pieces are, are really great. They're both gouache on board, mm -hmm. I believe. Yes. Um, and how do you come up with the, the, the organic shapes that you use? Some of them are, are very biomorphic, and then, so then we go into these very traditional patterns um, that we think of when we think of Native Americans in particular. Yeah, so the southeastern tribes, which was Cherokee before they were relocated to the reservation, um, they used a lot of organic natural forms like flowers, but they made them more as abstract already as Cherokee traditional, especially in the beadwork. So that's kind of what I'm pulling from. I make my own forms, like for example, these shapes are my own, like I, but I'm, I'm using the same feel as the moccasin yeah. beadwork pattern. Um, and then I, I add elements of like a basketry pattern in there and kind of collage it into my own visual language. I have to ask though, did um, Nana Echo's um, influence of using dots um, have anything to do with that? Or is that part of your vocabulary already? It your was, abstract vocabulary? It was, it, has always been there, but I would say that I've leaned more into it since I worked with yeah. him or since well, like that, we've had lots yeah. of conversations about that and even me just seeing how he uses all the dots has influenced me to be more bold with yeah. mine, I would say, <laughs> than what than what I used to do. Um, now I, I feel like I've built up mm -hmm. my textures a lot more just because I have been working with artists like yeah. him. Um, we have two quilts here, uh, both of them, um, have did a great deal to do with your heritage um, and how you've embellished them. Um, and on the label, we even go into very, very specifics on what materials you've collected and who you've taken, what community you've taken things from. But yeah. explain a little bit about um, how you go about creating a quilt. Yeah, so I started, this one started with my aunt gave me a quilt that had been in her attic for however long. I'm not even sure if a family member made it or... Oh, no. Where it fell. <laughs> Did it die? <laughs> Did it 
that. You guys, I am. <laughs> it's okay. It might be okay. Should it record that much? I think we're going. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> right, we have a blooper in there. We have some new equipment, everybody, so <laughs> forgive us. Okay, keep going. Okay, so I started with a quilt that my aunt gave to me, and then I used, I have a rotating pile of fabrics. Uh, some of them came from my great-grandma, who was, who was Cherokee. Um, she ran a small clothing store with my grandpa and had like clothing samples and stuff to get dresses made for the ladies in their little town and so i have i have inherited a lot of those fabrics that have still been in the family and then we also have the beadwork which i think is this, unbelievable the beadwork is from the Hmong tribe in thailand um and also some of the um indigo fabric that's batik dyed and the stitch work in the middle too is Hmong tribal. Um, I've also used like napkins from my grandma and other fabrics from my life. Um, and yeah, so it all just goes into this and collage. The, are these shapes traditional Cherokee shapes or are these just kind of uh, what comes from your own spirit, so there, to speak. This one references a moccasin beadwork pattern. So they are, it's basically like leaves and a vine that mm -hmm. were put on a moccasin and then I just reinterpreted well, them for myself. And it's so obvious from the other yeah. fiber work that you've done that this is very reminiscent and yet you can expand it to to greater yeah. <laughs> lengths, shall yeah. we say. <laughs> um, we have a whole series, this whole wall is nothing but um, gouache studies that you've done. Um, how do you go about building your gouaches in particular? Do you start with a sketch or do you go through and just let it kind of flow from your hand? It usually just flows or I'll start with one form that I want to include one um, main element and it might be color like maybe I think that I want to start with red or something and then I build from there. Mm -hmm. Or I know I want this main shape, but I don't know how I'm gonna fill in around it, and I just go for it usually. Um, there are a few that I do sketches of. Some of my larger gouaches are usually pre-sketched mm -hmm. a little bit more, but even my sketches aren't really full, like a full sketch. If you yeah. saw it, you would know it was yeah. a sketch. It's not well, an actual. And I, I noticed that like this one is so much about pattern and about combining different geometric, more geometric, even though it's kind of abstracted. But here we have a couple of pieces that are much more about floral. Mm -hmm. It seems like your inspiration seems to be more natural and, yeah. and from nature. Yeah, I do enjoy using organic shapes, so it, it usually leans towards the floral mm -hmm. or the leaves or something like that. And I live by a park, so I'm influenced by a lot of nature, mm -hmm. too. Well, and, and this one in particular, this is Bandelier Reverence. Um, we have this this U-shaped, kind of triangular almost, yes. um, shape here that was in one of the large gouaches over there, and it is repeated a couple of times, and mm -hmm. I think when we get to the prints. Um, is that have special significance to you? It's referencing bandolier bags and usually they have a big strap and it has beadwork going across the strap and then um, the bag is like a rectangular shape but it has a triangle flap usually. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. I'm referencing the flap on there and the beadwork and how it interacts together. Cool. Very nice. I think in this series of larger pieces, um, this one of course is very, this is water spider and um, a lot of different cultures from the very, very early, early um, Native Americans to even now a lot of, of uh, people are really focusing on nature and here we have a a definite spider. Yeah. I mean, you know that that is a spider. Where when we come to the clan journeys, it's more just um, referential mm -hmm. kind of movement that you've got with the shapes that you're using. Yeah. Um, how did you come up with this one in particular? Um, this was during part of my research of reading a lot of um, folklore or Cherokee historical stories and things that have been passed down through the generations. I'm learning them through reading because I don't have my, my great-grandmother to ask 
questions about what she learned living among the tribe. So a lot of it is influenced by what I'm reading about Cherokee history. And so I was reading a lot about the water spider and how the water spider brought the fire to the Cherokee. And so that's where this piece originates from, is reading a lot of those stories. Mm -hmm. Sort of Joseph Cor Cornell, you're kind of yeah. <laughs> doing that. I think what's really interesting about these two is clay culture, and this one is double weed. But what really impresses me is that this is very, very pattern-like mm -hmm. and bound together because of patterns. But I noticed that your mark making is so similar to the way that you um, address fiber work mm -hmm. and stitching it and putting it together, that you're going from a brush to your hand mm -hmm. to the brush again. Yeah, I enjoy that play too. And I like that people have to get up to see sometimes if it's actual stitched or mm -hmm. if it's painted. So I enjoy mixing all of those elements together. Have you looked at any other contemporary artists though? This reminds, this piece in particular reminds me a little bit of Sonia um, Delaunay, um, whose husband Robert Delaunay, they, they were concentrics and they, they had lots of circles and a lot of patterns and things and she even went on to create um, some patterns and stuff that were used to, in clothing, you yeah. know, as a clothing line and everything. But um, it's just, this, they're so tightly wound together. And I think that's the same with the weave, that you got it so tightly bound. Um, and it just, it works so well. It really does. <laughs> and I think these two are uh, both really the most referential to basketry, mm -hmm. um, especially this one up here, the burden basket. Can you tell us a little bit about the title and how yeah. you came to? Yeah, again, referencing Cherokee basketry, which I would say has been what Cherokee um, people have been not like artisans from the Cherokee Nation have been known for their basket weaving and um, the double weave, they, they do a double weave basket, which is really amazing. And so I've just looked at a lot of patterns from their basketry and everything and they do have made these really big burden baskets and I just, I love thinking about that and how it all the titling and the use of a basket, but then I'm putting it in this new format, and what does that mean to me as somebody growing up mm -hmm. outside of the tribe? In 21st century, yes. as opposed to <laughs> yes. 19th or yes. 20th century. Um, we have a wonderful one here, atypical, and I think it is very atypical because you have this wonderful um, center post that divides it, even <laughs> though our eyes complete it uh, totally. Um, but this is, it's really a lot of fun. This also has watercolor as opposed to just um, the gouache. Do you like one medium over the other? Um, I usually, sometimes I'll start with watercolor. I like it as a base coloring and then I build up with gouache because I love how opaque gouache mm -hmm. is. I would, and I also have a background in graphic design so I'm very drawn to sharp edges and the opaque colors, mm -hmm. bright colors. So. I would say I lean more towards gouache, but watercolor lends itself to it. <laughs> well, it does, and it, I love the, the freedom of the, the watercolor and putting the brush to the water, to the paper, and it just bleeds, but then you come back in and you do tighten it up, yeah, so to speak. It, yeah. um, we have another one of, <laughs> of your quilts, and again, very similar to the moccasin um, idea, but this one has quite a few things going on. Yeah, um, this one, do you want to explain what all is in this yeah, one in particular? This one collage is a lot more. I have um, custom fabric printed with my, some of my gouache paintings in it. This part and this pattern up here are from my paintings, so I'm also including my other mediums into mm -hmm. my, fi fabric, my fiber art now. And then I also have like wolf's teeth and yeah, the bones. Wolf's teeth are right here the in the bones here. Bone beads. And then where did you collect all these buttons? Um, <laughs> mostly thrifting. <laughs> um, and then actually a lot of these came from my hometown art center. My, I would say one of my art mentors that has brought me up in the art arts since I was little. She started giving me some things from her collection that I brought with me when I came to grad school and I've just been really blessed to include those into my work too. So she had a whole little box of shell um, shell buttons mm -hmm. and so I thought how do I make these into a pattern and they went in this quilt. So. And who did 
the lace work, the tatting. That was thrifted. thrifted. So a lot of the work, a lot of things I use too also just come from the community, from thrift, like thrifting or garage sales or estate sales, but I see it as a way of taking elements from where I'm living too mm -hmm. and the histories of people I may not know, but it's still important to me. Um, who made it, I don't know, but they, their work should still be seen in some way. Well, and Jeff and I are very taken by your newest um, series that you're working on, finding porcelain and uh, <laughs> ceramic plates and, and vessels and then going back into them and painting over them and, and incorporating the original design into your own yeah. hand. And it, it really, it's very exciting and I can't wait to see where that goes. We're gonna look over here at some of your um, printmaking and I think again, so it's so evident that it's from your hand. <laughs> <laughs> and here is the same image that you've hand colored and um, changed. I think it just changes the mood. Yeah. In in one from the other. Yeah, I I have enjoyed printmaking, learning printmaking too, because of that. Because of, because color is so important to me. I love seeing how it changes if I just change one part of my color scheme, how does it change the mood or evoke emotions and so on. It might like reference someone else's cultural background with one color where it might re like someone else may feel differently about the other color. I don't, I don't, I just love how each one changes when I hand color yeah. them. And it does. And again, the bandolier type of idea here is repeated in these three prints that you have. Um, <laughs> And they're tribal reflections. So, can you talk a little bit about the reflection part? If, is it a literally re a reflection, or is it a reflection on the object and the, the tribal um, significance? Probably reflecting the tribal significance, or just my reflection of what does it mean to be Cherokee, but having grown up outside of the community, the diaspora of the Cherokee people. How do I reflect that and give honor to what's been important to my family, but I'm still re like I'm kind of teaching, relearning and teaching myself for my future generations to continue to to value the tribe and value our history, but still have acknowledging that I've been distanced be just because of being born outside of. Yeah. the tribal lands well and and years yeah, literally and years, yes. <laughs> years and years of yeah, and the way different generations it. view have viewed being indigenous has shifted there's it hasn't always been what we think of now there's always been different connotations as each generation goes so i think a lot about all of those things when i'm yeah. making that's great we have four um new very very right <laughs> um, washes here and again these I think are are mostly um, very much into patterning and and just making a color and work for you and um, they're much more vibrant and they are gouache but usually gouache for the most part it has a more dull and the opaqueness kind of doesn't let the light come through and these seem to be very vi very vibrant yeah. Yeah, I've enjoyed those too. <laughs> and what's your source of, of um, inspiration? Because I mean, these are obviously truly floral. Mm -hmm. and that's floral. And this comes back to the pattern that we saw on yeah. the other one. And then this one is totally different than... <laughs> yeah, so actually these two are different because they're um, inspired by tribes that I worked with while I was overseas. So this is from embroidery that I saw in India. Um, and this would be embroidery from Indonesia. And I know people from those countries and or have visited there during working with nonprofits and that kind of thing. So I am, like some of this is collaging different cultures too, just because my world for the last several years has been a collage of multicultural people. And I have some best friends overseas that I'm also influenced by their culture. Mm -hmm. So I, I just love that. I love the conversation between cultures and how they relate to each other because if I didn't tell you that, you might think that was still a moccasin pattern mm -hmm. or beadwork from the States, but actually it's from Asia. So Well, I think that was what was so interesting when you worked with um, Nana Echo mm -hmm. and created, because um, his very indigenous and very natural is these, these small dots that Ghana 
um, has used for centuries as, as their way of expression. And yet your work just kind of blended immediately with it and it became a very, very strong painting. And I know this last um, piece that we have here is just a, um, Enigma, <laughs> as you've titled it, yeah. but a soft enigma, I'd say. Um, but again, I see so many of the patterns that you have here, and again, going back into it with watercolor so that you've made a print and you can make it a mono print by mm -hmm. changing the colors yeah. and all of that. This would be an example of using collaged fabric elements or things that I've gotten from the community to put into a more traditional print making and painting format because I used lace um, for the soft etching. I mm -hmm. used lace in it. I used vintage wallpaper from my grandma. So there's a lot of different elements to that. That's still when cut into my shapes reference my paintings. and <laughs> It's really, it's quite wonderful. Well, Hattie Lee, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> um, we have the exhibit is up through the end of the month. Um, also, I will plug that you have an MFA show um, being installed as we speak, right? Yes. <laughs> and will be up at Bradley University. It's um, if anyone is interested, they need to call Bradley and schedule an appointment because it is a closed campus yeah, it's for not right now. It's not open right but, now. But um, I hope that people come and really enjoy. We have enjoyed this so much. It is so colorful, and it is such a happy place to be. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. Thank Thanks, you. Hattie. <laughs>